You guys excited? Let's have fun. Let's have fun. Hello, welcome to Manitoba Music's uh, Music Works series. Uh, today we're going to be talking about brand and image. Uh, how much does it matter? Um, I'll introduce our panelists in a second. My name is Elise and uh, I'm the professional development coordinator here at Manitoba Music. And joining us we've got uh, Steph Johnson, who is from the band Mise en Scene. Uh, and then we have Jared Falk, who is with Killbeat. Um, so before we get right into this, um, I would like each one of you to uh, kind of introduce yourselves, talk about how you got um, involved in the music industry, where you started, um, and kind of what, what, what you do exactly in your position in the music industry. So I'll start with you. Um, hello, I'm Steph, and I am a musician and a singer-songwriter. Um, I got into music late in life um, <laughs> after studying a lot of visual art and cultural theory and was able to just kind of keep writing songs and then I just started a band, quit art school and moved back to Winnipeg and moved in with my parents, started a band and now that's what I'm doing. And you just yeah. got back from a European tour, correct? Yeah, yeah just got back from a European tour and a Western Canadian tour. So, just cool. getting back on track with my life. <laughs> <laughs> and Jared? Uh, I'm Jared Falk. Uh, I work for a company called Killbeat Music. We do uh, publicity, PR, uh, media relations for a bunch of artists across Canada. Um, usually that ends up being like 50-ish albums a year that we help launch and do the media campaigns for. Uh, my background, I worked as a photographer, as a radio producer, as a... Uh, bunch of those kind of things. I played in a band poorly, um, but I made a lot of connections in the music industry through that, uh, just locally, and uh, I kind of ended up uh, at my job from, I was working for an ad agency uh, after going to school, and um, basically friends of mine were like, hey, this company that has our, that our band is hiring and needs some more people, you should, uh, you should apply, and I applied out with that to uh, have a publicist, publicist here in uh, Manitoba. So it was kind of a uh, nice little deal for me to have a job and be able to feed myself. So that was good. Awesome. Yeah. Now it's come full circle and we need your help. Sure. Sounds good. Let's yeah. Start. All right. Um, so many artists don't like the idea of discussing brand and image um, because music is art and it should be appreciated as such um, but what advice would you give to those um, who who don't like to talk about uh, the idea of having a brand or a specific image for their music yeah I can talk about this one um, I think that uh, whether or not you like a brand or an image it's inevitable uh, I think that each artist has an, a brand uh, each person has a brand, whether or not you want it or not, it just kind of happens naturally. So it's kind of one of those things that you kind of, you can't avoid um, because unfortunately, in the same way that art is uh, up to subjection from other people, uh, so is your own personal image and, and brand and thus it's, uh, it's sadly a part of life. Is that, can we say that? Yeah, but we'll, no, we'll, 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 yeah, it is, it is, so it is. Um, and I mean, it's just, I think as, as an artist uh, who's looking to um, make that their I, even professional job or as a, even as a hobby or just as an art form in general, it's, uh, I think it's an important thing to consider. You don't have to spend a lot of time on it uh, necessarily, or if it's something that you want to really uh, put a lot of time and effort into, uh, it can help you grow leaps and bounds. Uh, in certain circumstances. However, it's uh, it's just something that you can't avoid, really, as as far as I'm concerned. Each person has a brand. Um, I think uh, Rachel said her brand was cat pictures uh, and her uniform. 
uh, Rachel Stone. Uh, she's in the back. You can talk to her about cat, <laughs> cat pictures and uh, and her uniform of uh, clothing that she wears. Um, I th I think uh, I'm probably just a music nerd guy. That's glasses, beard, button-up shirt. I think I fall into that pretty hard. Um, but I, there's tons of different things out there that you can do as an artist uh, that actually will work really well for you. Um, I don't know, we can get into specifics if you want, or if you want to jump in on uh, some thoughts, well, maybe? Well, no, everything you're saying is completely accurate and true. Like, if you're not going to, um, you know, engage in your image or your branding, then someone else is. And, you know, if you decide, well, I'm going to be really DIY, I don't care, that's fine, but people are going to read your image regardless. So in the same way that what I'm wearing right now reads as something we're all readable. All of us in this room is readable by what we're wearing and the way we present ourselves to the world and the way that we want people to interact with us. And so your music is no different. It's a form of art. And if you have the opportunity to make this work that you want to present to the world, then why wouldn't you also help your audience and your fans by helping them understand what you're trying to say through what image you are? And that can be like photo shoots. That can be your album cover, even if you're not on the album cover, like the colors you're using, the icons you're using, they all mean something. And to, to kind of ignore that or push that away is only going to make things more complicated because you're not helping your audience understand who you are in a visual sense. And if you're a live performer who goes on stage, that's another opportunity where people are going to be reading what, you, what you're doing and what your message is. Yeah, uh, yeah thank you. Um, so would you, would you agree that, you know, if you're searching online or you're just kind of browsing, um, would you agree that people will generally uh, judge an artist uh, based on their aesthetic story and image before clicking on their music and giving that a try? I think absolutely. I think yeah. I do it all of the time. Yeah, I do um, too. <laughs> I, I, I just well, wanted to make sure I wasn't superficial. No, oh, no, oh, no. no. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone is to some extent, um, but uh, absolutely, I think I think that's entirely true. Uh, I mean, that can go for um, promo photos, that can go for album covers, that can go for video stills. I mean, you can make it. You can see a YouTube video, and you can see the still image, the holding image, and you can already make a judgment as to what kind of video it's going to be. You can see a band photo, and you can see you can say, oh, okay, so it's a folk duo. They've got their instruments with them. I can understand that already. Or I see a bunch of leather jeans or leather jackets and black jeans all torn up, and I'm like, oh yeah, probably a punk band, maybe something like that. I don't know. Uh, maybe the Strokes. Who knows? Um, but at the same time, too, you already have an idea of what you're getting into before you're even either making that click or picking up that album. Or um, I think album covers are a little more difficult to, to do that way. So promo images and, uh, I mean, video stills and those kind of things are, are really easily identifiable. Um, I think even band names, uh, to, to an extent, is pretty, um, you know, uh, uh, easily identifiable in advance anyway. Um, I can hear, see a band name like Three Inches of Blood and pretty much understand what they're doing uh, right off the bat. Uh, so, and I can, you know, see a band that says something about uh, harvest and leaves in the name, and I'm like, oh, okay, it's probably a folk band. Uh, so it's, I mean, it's, it's definitely going to happen. Uh, and in a world that's incredibly competitive um, for getting clicks, for getting attention, for that is just kind of, you know, almost overwhelmed with different forms of art and different uh, streams of this, that, and the other thing, it's, uh, I think it's really important to think about that if you're looking to stand out anyway. Do you have any additional comments on that? No, you said it. Okay. That's right. right. No? Okay. So you had mentioned band name, um, and that was actually one of, one of um, my questions that I, I wrote down was um, how important a band name is. Um, and, you know, what are some things when someone is, you know, thinking up a band name or thinking maybe it's time to change our band name, um, what are some things that should be kept in mind? Um, uh, you know, obviously what you were saying, like the branding of it, it should kind of give some sort of um, hint as to what your music is going to sound like. But apart from that, and especially someone who's working in media, Jared, um, what, what's important in a band name? 
Um, what's important in a band name? What was your band name? Oh, I don't want to say. <laughs> They're all so bad. <laughs> um, okay, what's Im- what's important? I mean, so I think it depends a little bit on genre, as uh, in, in what we're talking about here, and what your I think overall goal and audience level is in terms of band name. I mean, so we talked a little bit about like you're a metal band. It's pretty easy to. to name a metal band and have an idea what's going on. Um, same for folk band or that kind of thing. But once we get into genres like, uh, uh, let's say post R&B, for example, that's a, I mean, it's totally acceptable to go by your own name, but to go also by something entirely abstract at the same time too, right? So it's, the lines there are kind of blurred, but that's also part of the genre and part of the brand to, um, to have that. Um, so I think when you're thinking about a band name, if you're intent is to be really clear uh, about what your what your music is, um, then do that. Um, but there is also uh, a brand and an image uh, of, and in certain genres, where that uh, intent is uh, purposely muddy. Um, so you can have something that's purposely abstract, and that can also be part of what that is. And so, let's say, for example, it exists in a uh, um, it exists in the, fol- in the folk world, for example. Um, you can tell that maybe that's something that's a little more purposefully muddy because it's maybe a little more experimental on that kind of thing, a little more esoteric on that kind of side of things. Um, but at the same time, too, that's also conveyed right off the bat. So from a media side of thing, if your goal is to gain media uh, exposure and attention that way, um, I would say probably err on the side of, you know what, maybe we should um, you should think about naming our band something that's Maybe a little more obvious as to what we're what we're trying to do here, but um, at the same time, too, if your goal is to be a truly artistic art form, uh, artistic art form. I, if your if your if your goal is a truly artistic outcome, and that's your that's your end goal is to create art for your audience, whether that be yourself or an actual audience, um, I think then the sky's the limit in that case. I mean, we don't really have to play by any rules in that situation what about how searchable it is sure um you know uh like you've heard or or the name being used like i've i've heard of some bands running into the problem where they've you know gotten away with using their name and gotten you know a mild amount of success and then all of a sudden had to turn around and change it because there's a bigger band from the states that's using it and has the um do you see, do you have you seen that happen like when you're working with artists and yeah absolutely yeah so it is it is a big deal to kind of look into that and search the search the band name and see what else comes up because search engines are kind of important I guess yeah that's, um, I mean that, and that whole uh, search engine dynamics that's a whole other <laughs> ball yeah, of that's, wax all together that's like a whole but, other workshop yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but no it's definitely it's definitely important definitely something to consider um, yeah. especially if you're again on that path to try and stand out from whatever the, everything else is out there so. Um, do you think it's important for um, solo artists to have a stage name? Because um, I get asked that question a lot. Um, yes, yes and no. It depends, again, on genre a bit, I think. Um, I mean, so, and I think the reason that this is, we're seeing this trend is that there's also a trend happening uh, in which kind of it's the male solo songwriters are fading away um so it's it's becoming less popular um to be just a male solo songwriter and it's i mean uh let's be honest male solo songwriters have had their time in the, in the light already we don't <laughs> we don't need to shed any more spotlight on male singer songwriters in my opinion but at the same time too uh it's still a, a verified art form and still a way to get your music out so how do you how do you stand out in this uh in that world and i, I mean i think that, that answer is to try and um, identify as, uh, or present yourself as something different than what, what would class would be a male singer-songwriter. Now this is kind of more traditional in the, let's say if you're a singer-songwriter and you do maybe a little more of a, of a rock kind of esoteric post-wave stuff, you know, add a, you know, a bunch of different stuff into it rather than just being solo guy with a guitar um, playing like coffee house kind of, kind of vibes. Um, that world, I think, still works around artist name and that kind of thing. However, you know, once we get into, uh, you know, indie rock in general, we'll go with that for, for right now. Um, I think it becomes a little, a little muddier, um, and 
it's nicer it can be nice to stand out in that situation however if you're um, if you've already built a brand and have built a, an audience around your own brand name and your own your own name uh, it may be worth considering keeping it and running with it um, so it kind of depends on where you're at what genre you're in in that situation but um, I think the the reason that we're seeing it happening is because the male solo songwriter thing is largely uh, passed anyway, so which is good. Um, all right, so I want to get more into the the visual stuff. Um, having so having an uh, an image or creating a brand doesn't necessarily mean changing who you are or what you stand for. Um, that's obviously not what it's about at all. Um, but how can an artist find that? And how would you define finding your image or creating a brand? Like, what does that mean for an artist? Um, oh, that's a big question. Well, I feel like it's really more, um, I don't think you can ever just like decide to be something. It's always c gonna come from within. And I think that's the most important mistake that a lot of people make is they say, I wanna be like that band. And so I'm just gonna copy what that band looks like. I'm gonna use their font and I'm gonna use their colors and that's what I'm gonna do. When really it should be coming from within and that even goes for band names and representation and all, that, all those forms. Um, it really needs to, like, it really, really needs to come from within. What are you trying to say? Like, you're an artist, yes, you're a musician, but like, you're an artist, and you have to think about yourself as this artistic being that can encompass a lot of different things. And I think a lot of people make the mistake by trying to just do what they see other people doing. You can use techniques and ideas, yeah, that's great. But in terms of like what your soul is trying to promote and what your soul is trying to say out in that world, that has to be so authentic, so true, and you have to follow that voice. Because if you don't do that, then your image crumbles and you can't keep up with your branding. Then it gets all weird because then you go to the next album cycle and maybe you worked with a different producer and you want to kind of go more that vibe. But if you never really knew how you wanted to present yourself to the world in the first place, then it's just going to continue to get more and more difficult it's a more uphill battle so the sooner you can kind of like this is the baseline this is the foundation of who we are we represent this 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 and this right now this is where I'm coming from this is what my music means and I want to show the world that I'm like this through wearing that and that's who I am right now and you can develop every album cycle can be different you can be moving into different things David Bowie did a great job at doing that so I think it's really about trusting what's inside like you know what your band name is by what's inside your heart you know like yeah check online make sure it's not the same you know like you're not Led Zeppelin like that's been taken but you know it's you know there's an inherentness to who you are as a musician and as a performer and as an artist and I think really what it is about is refining that and not being afraid to be a little bit you know larger than life within that realness do you have any comments um, yeah I think definitely uh so really good points there about being honest about your brand. I think that's your definitely your base level is is uh, as far as an artist's brand is concerned. I think there's a lot of times where, like you said, if you don't follow that baseline, your honest opinion of what you're trying to do, what your art is trying to do, and who you are as a person, I think we get. Um, into very muddy territory that is not good, not the good kind of muddy. Well, and uh, it's hard for you to do your job with that too. Absolutely. Like how do you pitch to media when you're working with a, a an individual or a band that is like, well, I don't really know what I'm going for with this album. Right, absolutely. And at the same time too, uh, we also get into the problem where um, artists try to manufacture a brand that is not necessarily honest and we get into a situation where it becomes unbelievable uh, entirely. And media can see that and say, okay, this is entirely a shtick now and there's nothing left that's true and honest, so what's uh, what's the what's the point here? It's now this is some sort of um, I don't know, costume party really and, and it's nothing else. So um, but at the same time too, uh, those kind of bands uh, that I feel anyway and I've noticed uh, as soon as you start doing that, as soon as you start manufacturing something that your music doesn't represent uh, or that you don't represent and going above and beyond that, that's when you start to fade. Um, you might have a bit of light, oh, this is doing something different. Oh, it's not honest. It's not 
really what's going on. And as soon as you see the band shut off the lights and or shut off you know everything and see them out in the back and they're just total dicks to everyone and then it's yeah it's it's totally gone and everyone takes notice of that everyone takes notice of that the audience takes notice of that um industry takes notice of that media takes notice of that it's gone after that yeah so the biggest thing is really remaining true to yourself absolutely um so for like for for those who are not even necessarily not fashionably inclined like I feel like I can dress every day pretty good, but when it comes to the stage, I'm like, I don't know what to wear to represent my music. Um, what I know that you're really good at dealing with this kind of thing, Steph, um, but what are some, you know, like, especially with bands, everybody in the band is different. Everyone has their own personality. They all come from different backgrounds. Um, how does each person find that, like, what they're going to wear on stage and how how does a band full of a bunch of different individuals look like a unit? Okay, here's what you do. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, if you're a band, I'm assuming this is a, about a band, okay? This isn't like a front person with, you know, we're talking about a whole band here. So um, the reality is larger than who you are as a person. It's a collective group, it's a team, just like a sports team wears a uniform, you have a uniform, and that can be something you wear every single day on stage, or it can be a, like a rotating you know, selection of ideas. But um, what I've found to be the most effective is, well, first of all, you gotta talk about it. Like, I've, I've done a lot of styling for bands, and like branding and image stuff, and photo shoots with them, and you know, the biggest thing is none of them have sat down and ever talked about it. And I'm like, so you've never talked about what you're going to wear on stage? No. no. I don't know. Like, I'm awkward about it. I don't know. No, like, you can't. This is a part of music. You have to talk about it. So the main thing is opening up that dialogue with your band and figuring out, you know, maybe we all wear black pants. Maybe we start there and then just see what happens, you know? Or maybe it's we all wear a certain kind of boot and then we kind of figure out everything else from there. Um, there should usually be like a bit of an overarching theme, like each member going into the next one. It, it should make visual sense in one way or another. Um, it doesn't have to be over the top. You don't have to be wearing like a feather boa on stage unless you really want to. But if you do, it should make sense with what everybody else is wearing and it should make sense in a theme. And um, yeah, I think, what else is your question? <laughs> I gotta start going. Well, how do you find? So, how do you find that even as an individual in a band? Um, like, oh, yeah, okay. how do you figure out? You know, from your regular streetwear, what you might want to wear on the street to what you want to wear on stage and what you should wear on stage. Well, it should, it should be augmented in one way or another because you're on stage, you're performing, you're you're an extension of yourself. Like that's what's happening. You're singing a song. You know, that song that, that you're lyrically singing isn't happening to you right now. It happened to you when you wrote it. So you got to get into your character, uh, an, an alter ego, if you will. It doesn't have to be, like, halfway around the world from who you actually are, but it's an augmented, e like, ego almost. Um, so you got to find way things that make you feel that way. I always tell the guys that they need to wear a great pair of pants and a great pair of shoes. Because when you wear a great pair of pants and a great pair of shoes, you walk like you own the place and you feel like that. And it sounds silly, but wear a great pair of shoes and tell me you don't want to go walk all over the world and let everybody know who you are. It feels great. So you got to find things that make you feel great so that when you're on stage, you do feel larger than life because it's your magic shoes or your jeans or whatever. There's something special that makes you feel special on stage. I wear a lot of glitter on stage, okay? I am a disco ball on stage. I love that shit. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear, but I love it. I lean into it, that's who I am. I don't wear glitter down the street, but I wear it on stage. It's who I am, I feel like I can be free and I feel like I'm, I'm an augmented part of who I am. So, when it comes to talking to your band, you need to sit down and talk about where everyone's limits are. Like, not everyone's going to be comfortable in a glitter jacket. That's fine. But what is someone going to feel really awesome in on stage that's going to augment their performance, that's going to make them feel great? But at the end of the day, the one thing I always say is if you're performing on a show, if someone and you're standing outside getting some fresh air, the person walking into the, the venue should know you're playing that night by what you're wearing. They should know that you're gonna be on stage. 
So take that as you will. I like that. <laughs> we can have fun here. We can have fun. Yeah, as a side note, Steph once sent me a picture of a pair of like silver boots or uh, from an online store and she was like, You need to buy these for the stage and they were really expensive. But I was like, I'm gonna do it and that is like literally the one piece of clothing that I have that every single person at the end of a show talks about. So I can I can contest that you might just have to invest in something the pair shoes really amazing funny. and and I can wear ripped jeans I can wear whatever else I want and um and it does make me feel like a million dollars every day. and I only put them on right before I step on stage I don't wear them when I go out for uh, I don't when I go outside <laughs> for fresh air um yeah but it's <laughs> it is it is I can say from experience that having that one thing uh, and it's something that I would have never bought and I would have never worn anywhere else, but it, it really does work. And um, I've actually had people look for me at the end of the show, like just trying to find my boots and I've changed out of them and they're like, oh, I didn't recognize you because you weren't wearing your boots. So that's how impactful that is. <laughs> um, do you have any comments about how people dress and how important that is? Um, on the media side of things because I know people hate talking about this yeah on the media side of things I mean media is really kind of paying attention to uh, to your image in in respect to their audience as well too right so um, let's say that your uh, your image is uh, what can we go with you know, let's just take for example a, a a major a major outlet like let's say the Winnipeg Free Press or something like that. So Winnipeg Free Press readership is tentatively skewed a little bit older, right? So their readership is probably going to be in the 30 to to 60 demographic, and that's really what they're really focused on, right? So if there's a band that's you know a young uh, scrappy punk band uh, who just kind of wear punk T-shirts and black jeans on stage, and they their audience is strictly 16 to 25 you're probably not really going to pay attention to it, no matter what you look like, image-wise, brand-wise, just because it's not something that their readers are interested in, and thus they can't sell papers, they can't sell advertising, yada, yada, yada. It's a big trade-off. Um, so uh, keep in mind that when you're approaching media, even, as to what your image and what your brand and what your audience looks like, um, and see if that audience is the same. So it's a... And then at the same time, too... Uh, you have to stick out a little bit in some situations, um, but that's uh, certain genres aren't aren't that way. I mean, um, let's take a take an example of there's a, a country singer that we used to work with. Uh, her name is Whitney Rose. She's on Six Shooter Records now. So she does this kind of like uh, old school, uh, grand old opera kind of vibe, but she's my age, uh, and ha her songs are that kind of same you know same kind of genre as well too. A little bit throwbacky in the '60s country vibe. Um, but the way she dresses is it's just it's kind of this mix of kind of newer modern fashion mixed with that old school grand old opry kind of vibe right and so when you start talking about um, country singers and in that kind of world uh, it's just a different enough approach to it and just a different enough take on it that it starts to stand out and it starts to um, look a little different than everything else that's around right so there's a lot of country singers in that world that um, kind of sit I guess uh, a little bit more in just the mainstream yeah we're wearing what what all the moms are wearing I don't know uh, how to dress people um, but at the same time too uh, so it's, it's just a little bit different that it's, it becomes a little more visually appealing and so if you're a media outlet who's looking to uh, talk about country music like that here's something that stands out a little more visually and visually and is going to catch a few more eyes on the paper if you're printing that picture um, or if you're posting that video online or something like that. So it's, um, I mean, it, it is important, but at the same time, too, keep in mind what your audience is and what the, uh, the outlets you're going for, what their audiences are, because those have to match up. And uh, that's the only way that people get media attention, really. But then at the end of the day, too, I think it's important that it's like if you're doing a press release or something and someone's never heard of you, the first thing they are going to see is that image, right? Yeah. The, of your photo or whatever you're wearing or however you're visually representing yourself. Um, and then on the other side, um, a show or a live performance, you never know who's going to be in the room. That's also how 
like the first thing that people are going to see is when you walk on stage and how how you look, right? Yep. Um, do you do you find it distracting when you go to a show and you see an act, whether it's a solo artist or a band, and their what they're wearing or how their hair is or whatever is confusing? Like, do, does do you find that distracting? Cause uh. I find it a little distracting if the I hear the I hear the music and the image doesn't match up with the music. Okay. Yeah. I think that's when I find it a little bit distracting. So if you're or like if sorry if one person on stage oh. also so, you know like sometimes when you see I guess what I'm trying to get at because again I'm like just trying to go by what what I feel when I go to shows and I just want to get opinions from you and it, of course you um. But say there's a whole band and maybe three of them go together and one of them doesn't. Like, um, how important is it? You know, if there's if there's one individual in the band that's like, I just want to wear whatever I want. Um, do you find that that's really important to address? Like, for anyone who's kind of going through that with their band. Yeah. I think yeah. I think each band is probably going to address that in and of themselves. There's going to be. I don't know. I know a lot of people who won't touch that. <laughs> no. Yeah. You can't you can't be the odd man out you can't not make sense with the rest of the piece that's like looking at you know a monet and just like pasting like a picture of miley cyrus in the corner and being like enjoy it's like doesn't really make sense like it you know unless they're a hired musician who wants to be wearing all black and fading into the background i can understand that but if you're a band and everybody else is like committed to this image and one person isn't then maybe they should not be on stage. I don't know. Like it's kind of a part of the deal. Yeah. Can I, can I tell my awesome yeah. uh, on yeah, stage yeah. story? I want to hear it. Uh, one time, my buddy, his dad, uh, was playing at the uh, Midnight Heritage Museum in Steinbeck, uh, and he does uh, Hank Williams covers in Low German, uh, and he needed someone to play drums, and so he asked me to play drums for him, and I showed up there with my drum set, uh, and then he just hauled out a big sombrero out of the back of his van. And handed me a sombrero, and then he handed my buddy a cowboy hat, and he says, "Here, you guys are Texan Mex now." <laughs> See, there you go. And so I played an hour and a half set of just, and I wore a big sombrero, and he called me Mex on stage the whole time. Uh, I wasn't. Uh, I mean, now going back, I would say no uh, to that, but at the time, I mean, this guy knew his brand, knew his audience, uh, and that was. 15 years ago um, and that's my favorite story and I wish I had <laughs> photos of that yeah it's great I didn't that's get paid funny. either so uh, yeah it was a fun time though sold out crowd Minute Heritage Museum Steinbeck Manitoba so speaking of photos because you just said <laughs> it, I'm going to use that as a segue Kay. into the next thing um, band photos um, I, I think that for artists you know I think for solo artists, it's a lot easier to get a decent photo because there's only one of you. Um, but, you know, how do you avoid that, like, you know, everyone with their arms crossed in front of a brick wall? Or do you have, uh, I know you do photos for bands, um, and and Jared obviously pitches bands with photos <laughs> a lot of the time. Um, what are some ways to think outside that box, and do you have any hints or ideas for people? Um, yeah, tons of hints and ideas and tips. Um, there's a lot of things you can consider when you're setting up a photo shoot. Um, color blocking, just pick a color. Maybe you just work with a color. Maybe you use a backdrop. Um, you know, it sounds kind of weird, but look through magazines and like even just like a fashion ad can just be like, oh, I like how these people are positioned. I would never naturally ever think of that, but it could look kind of cool in front of this backdrop. Little things like that can just augment a photo shoot really quickly. Um, again, playing with like either blacks and whites and then having colors. We should always be aware of shooting in black and white or shooting digitally in color, but knowing like what's gonna look good in a black and white photo for when your photos are gonna be printed in black and white, what's gonna pop more. You wanna make sure you have vertical shots and horizontal shots, so depending on the article, it would fit whatever way. So everyone has options. But you want to make sure that it's eye-catching. You want to make sure it's clear who the vocalist is. Um, you know, a lot of li drummers are important. They're really important. Um, but people got to know who the singer is, too. They, like, that's got to be... No, they, people got to know. 
Um, and again, this is another tip uh, just for women or anyone wearing makeup. You got to wear a lot more to make it look like you're wearing anything on stage if that's what you're going for. Um, it just doesn't show up in the same way. So if you want that look, you got to put more on. Hair needs to be bigger than it should be. It's going to feel ridiculous, but it looks great on camera. Um, but yeah, again, like your outfits and the way you coordinate things and the way you stand, like don't put the tallest person in the band next to the shortest person in the band. That looks, all of a sudden, it looks a little bit more like a circus show or whatever. Um, because all those, first of all, you want to feel confident p promoting this and you want people in the media to be, I want that band and of all the photos I have to choose for, for this article, I want that picture. So you want it to be interesting, you want it to be show your face, you don't want it to be too abstract, and you want it to be inviting at the same time. Um, yeah, I think at the same time, too, um, going back to, uh, and I used to do photos for bands back in the day, uh, one of the things that I always went with when we were discussing ideas and concepts and that kind of thing is we always start, again, with the same way that your brand exists, uh, start with what's natural, what's your natural environment look like, and go from there. Um, so we're with an artist uh, named uh, Chad Van Galen uh, right now. He's uh, kind of popular in Canada some places. Um, but he's an um, uh, incredible visual artist as well, and he does a thousand different forms of, a uh, thousand different outlets and art forms. And But at the same time, too, his all his press photos for this last run uh, were all done in his home studio because his home studio is just a nuts place. And his music uh, is well represented by what his home studio looks like. So it's it's just a straight up photo of him in a t-shirt, nothing crazy, but everything else around it uh, entirely represents what his music is and who he is as an artist. Um, so I mean, not everyone has the uh, benefit of also being a visual artist with a crazy, insane studio. Um, but at the same time, too, um, where do you where do you write? Where do you write your music? What is the most comfortable place for what you would go to for where you write your music? Start there and extract from from that situation. So if that situation is, oh man, I love sitting in my grandpa's old 70s basement and thinking about uh, 70s bands, then do a photo shoot in your grandpa's 70s basement with shag carpet on the walls and stuff like that. Just think about that as to uh, what works for you. And if, I mean, if you're, uh, if you're in a punk band, punk bands have garbage studios. Uh, there's crap everywhere, but that's the vibe. That's exactly what goes on. Uh, I mean, maybe it doesn't stand out so much from from the next, you know, um, image from one to the next. But at the same time, too, it it is backing up your brand and backing up your image and backing up your vibe altogether. So, it's um. I mean, think about think about that for location wise. Uh, dress however you decide to dress. I'm not I'm not the person to talk to there. But um, I think that's really really a good place to go. Avoid railway tracks. Uh, that's been overdone. Um. Brick walls uh, can work. Um, may maybe avoid them, though, if you can, too. Um, but at the same time, too, uh, also, uh, just a, if you're a solo performer, just a straight-up decent headshot works as well, too. Um, it gives a good, a good representation of what's going on. Um, and then at the same time, if you're a, um, a bit of a more abstract band, um, I mean, you can get into abstract forms of photography as well, too. If that's the case, people don't really care so much about what your face looks like. So, uh, let's say a band like Do Makes a Think or something like that. Um, they don't even have to be in the damn press photo, as far as I'm concerned. And you can have an abstract photographer take a picture of four images, something, whatever. It still works as a press photo for a band because it backs up that brand, it backs up that image. Um, maybe the Globe and Mail is going to ask for pictures of your face, but a place like the United or something like that is going to say, oh, that's a cool photo. Yeah, we're going to do that as a representation of what this band is. Um, so it is, um, I mean, it does depend a little bit, but I always, I just start with start with who you are, start with where your music starts, uh, and then go from there. And I mean, if you, if there's a place uh, even where you've been inspired by a song or something like that, uh, or um, go there. Like if that was, oh, you know what? I was walking down this street corner here, uh, and this is where I got inspired by this song, and this is what I saw. Go there because it probably backs up what you're singing about in that song as well too. So it's a, 
I mean, it's not a bad place to start. There's lots of places you can go. Photography is kind of a really large art form. So uh, play with it. Um, just wondering if you do have, like, more of an abstract photo. Um, like, I'm thinking of the Darcy's a while back had, like, their four faces, but they were, like, ghost images almost. Yep. Is it also important for press to have an actual promo shot, though, like, where they're... Or would that work? Some, yes. That works. Um, yeah. That does work. Um, proper press outlets that are going to be concerned about that. Okay. Um, concerned about seeing people's faces and this, that, and the other thing. Which is why it's always a good idea if you're doing press photos to have a kind of a bit of a variety. Um, I wouldn't do more than four, but if you're in your four, uh, one of them is more of a standard alternative. Um, in case um, a place like the Winnipeg Free Press does come knocking and they want something that has people's faces in it, do that. Yeah. Um, but uh, don't necessarily let that be your only option if you if you have the means to to make that happen. Uh, and Steph had touched on the fact that you should have um, like a landscape yeah. and a portrait. Is it also important to do black and white and color? Or um, I so when we talk about press photos. Like we say, we like to keep it limited to about four mm -hmm. to keep people kind of on track, and be also to keep your brand um, consistent across all the different uh, all the different mediums, right? So if you see your photo in one place uh, online here, and it matches what you saw on the paper, it matches you know what was in that show poster, that kind of thing. Um, that's really nice because that keeps brand consistency all the way across. So when you're talking to media and you've got brand photos, we like to keep it at four. Give them opportunities to choose something that fits their medium. Um, and if you're at four, I would say only one of those should be in black and white. The rest should be in color because most of the time people like to pick up the color photos just because they pop a little more. Um, there are some times when they're going to be printed in black and white. So if you'd like to control that, uh, how it uh, looks in black and white, put a black and white image up there. But also, like Steph said, be conscious about how a color image transfers over to, to black and white because it's going to be a time when it's going to get printed in black and white and you don't have a choice. That's just what happens with the paper. I find that so interesting to consider because I never considered that. I think not until I saw you on the panel at Breakout West and you were talking about the portrait and the landscape and what different uh, media outlets to need. I was like, oh, I never thought about that before. Um, okay, so I want to talk about some other platforms. We've talked about the stage and what to wear. We've talked about photos. Um, and just as, you know, a little tip for everyone here we uh, exactly two weeks from now we're going to be doing a panel specifically on social media and fan engagement um, but just on the branding and image side um, as far as social media goes um, how can artists use that as a tool um, to present that brand and to present that image like what can what can you do on Instagram I guess day to day um, that still represents what you wear, like, on stage or in your photos. You mean, like, like you mean casual photos or something? Well, I or? don't know. Like, like I mean, it's just another way to present the brand, right, and the image. Yeah. Um, but what can, what kind of things do artists need to think about when they're using those tools and when they're posting even, like, a comment on Facebook or a status on Facebook for their band? Um, well, Instagram is a tool to continue to tell people what who you are and what you're what you look like and what you represent. So, you know, you can have a candid shot, you can have a live shot, you can use a press shot, you can use an outtake from a photo shoot that's not in the press shots. There's a lot of dif different things that you can kind of like gather up and save and um, launch with like, okay, I, we have a show, we can use it for promotion or just, you know, hey, how's it going today, guys? Um, I don't think you should be afraid to show your personality on things like Instagram because it's, it's still quite informal, um, but it's an opportunity always to continue to refine how you want people to engage and how do you want people to see your, your band and how, how you want them to react to it. Um, so like for us, um, we do a lot of like live shots, we do some of our promo stuff, but we also like take lots of photos of like what we're doing and where we are. We want to let people know like we're in Germany right now and here's 
stuff in front of a church or whatever but I don't want them take I don't want a photo of me in sweatpants like <laughs> with you know a slurpee in my hand actually maybe that's kind of cool maybe I do like that idea but you know like you do have to kind of think like what's a good one and what's not and like but again that's kind of where it comes into that inherent understanding of like what your message is um, for us like we can be kind of DIY like really fun and we don't care but we love art and we love performance and we love all that fun sparkly stuff so you'll kind of see a lot of all that with us our Instagram story is sometimes just as ridiculous and we have like polls on it so there's audience engagement and stuff like that but in terms of um, being able to further your brand I think your Instagram should be more about uh, you should be using it more as an opportunity to just continue to refine your image more than it just being like a really really fun thing like use your personal account for like the really casual and formal ones the your your brand and your music it should be it's your business okay you gotta really think about it like that like it's your business how do you want people seeing you when they scroll down all those thousands and thousands of photos that they see like they should know when it's yours you know there should be something about it like July talk does a really good job with their Instagram everything's in black and white everything every photo they've ever put on their Instagram is in black and white and a lot they use a lot of film photography and they on their comments and stuff they tell you what film they use and what camera they're shooting in because they're filmmakers and photographers and all that so there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of like find your voice on Instagram you can have it be a little bit off-brand a little bit sometimes like with July talk being like this is about photography and black and white and this is the mood um, but again like you really got to think about have that conversation with yourself you really got to ask yourself those questions and when you're making a post like what's this post about who is it for what am I trying to tell people and if you don't know the answers to those questions then don't post it so for some bands it might be okay like depending on um, who they are the point they're trying to get across for some bands it might be okay to um, like post a picture of somebody you know like passed out on the hotel room floor whereas with other bands who are trying to represent a totally different image yeah. that is absolutely not okay yeah. yeah so that's it's again about finding uh, who you are and <laughs> representing uh, representing that I I once saw a band um, post like this is way maybe way off topic but I did see a, a band post um, a picture on their Instagram of like just like a homeless guy like making fun of them and I ended up unfollowing that band <laughs> because you know just because I thought it was super super terrible but that's kind of I, I'd say an example actually you should never do that I don't think yeah, well, um, but I, I think when you said it's your business it's like to me that was a band and that was their business and I'm uh, you know if if I was gonna shop at a store and they put up a picture like that I would never shop there again yeah well and especially like we're all like you know a lot of us here we're all like emerging bands we're all trying to go for it like when you're in the development mode and like getting all this stuff going like you just need to solidify your brand stop worrying don't worry about being a character or like you know a socialite in any kind of way just focus on what you're trying to do with your music and what you want your music to represent. That's more important than trying to like get some sort of ironic laugh out of someone out of, that you maybe don't even know. You don't want to. That can be really risky. Like you can turn someone off and they'll unfollow you if you do something a little bit too, you know, iffy. Stick to what you know, which is like you should know who you are, what your music's about, what your brand's about. Follow that, and you'll see the people. They'll. They follow, people follow what's real. They don't follow what's fake, they follow what's real and what they believe in and what they like. And you'll notice that. So I would just start with, work on that first and then get, then get smart and sassy later once you have millions of fans. Or maybe don't, I don't know. That could, they could turn on you pretty big time, I don't know. Do you have any comments on? Uh, no, I think you summed up pretty, pretty easily there. I mean, it's always coming back to the same point of being what, you are what's natural to you what's your natural environment and uh, like you said people see through things that are fake pretty darn quick um, but at the same time too you're let's say on a thing like Instagram or whatever um, especially with the story function um, just showing kind of who you are as an artist if that's if that's the image that you're going for uh, is incredibly easy that way to just show uh, 
uh, kind of the everyday what you're up to kind of idea. Maybe you're maybe you're on tour. Maybe you're not on tour. Maybe you're just songwriting or something like that. Maybe you're just doing uh, doing a little session by yourself in in your house or in your apartment. Um, do that. I mean that it gives people a little bit of a peek behind uh, behind the scenes. Really. I mean every time I am interested in a in a band or or interested in a musician. I'm always going to try and find what's the what's the story behind the band, what's in behind the the scene. Where you know what do these guys uh, do on a on a day to day basis is sort of kind of interesting. Sometimes it depends on the musician. I mean, sometimes if you do too much and it's just monotony, I don't need to see you buying coffee uh, every morning at Tim Hortons, uh, and then going back oh, I for another bagel, and then oh, I forgot to get the hockey cards. <laughs> so I mean, it's, like I mean. There is a there is a, a situation where it becomes too much, but at the same time, too, that behind the scenes look is always really, really interesting. And I mean, that's what uh, magazines like Rolling Stone and Spin and all that kind of stuff that were built on. They were built on those in depth interviews with major musicians, and that's <coughs> really what's what's interesting. What is uh, what's the natural you know brand of of the band kind of thing? Um, and I mean, it can go as deep as like. Uh, what books are you reading? You know what's uh, what's going on there, right? Because that becomes part of of your brand as well too. All the things that you consume uh, end up um, informing what you do, really. Um, and at the same time too, it becomes a bit of a, an interesting factor. And so if I'm like really interested in, in a musician's lyrics, and I'm like, oh, they're reading that book. Oh, I wonder if they're getting any inspiration from that book. Maybe I'll go pick up that book and read that book. Um, and you maybe you get a better understanding of where this person's coming from as a as an artist. Um, I mean, it can go in many different forms other than that. But at the same time, too, um, social media is a great place for that because it's so darn easy to do, uh, and it's free. Um, and if your if your content is good, and if you're conscious of that fact of oversharing versus sharing just enough, um, and